Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing this lovely three scoop ice cream cone in polychromos color pencils on a Strathmore 400 series Bristol paper. I'm going to show you how I get started and what I do even before I start drawing. I'm going to just show you the method to my madness, which you can kind of see on the right, but I will go over that with you so you can just get a better feel for how to start a drawing and how to make your life a lot easier as you go along in the process. So here's my color chart. This is how I start all my drawings and I look at my reference photo and then I pick out all the colors that I think might be in that photo and then I swatch them out. Some of them I don't use at all, some of them I do use and then sometimes I can see if I need to pick a different color out. The next thing I do is I go ahead and I kind of map out the ice cream cone the uh, raspberry swirl part of the ice cream, the chocolate part, and the vanilla part. And just do kind of a quick little sketch to see what colors I'm going to be using and kind of a technique on how I'm going to get it to look realistic. All the prep work that you do before you even start drawing, it just makes it a more enjoyable process. Now, as you can see, I'm laying down my lightest tones of each of those colors first so that um, I can have a nice base layer down. Everything blends better when you have a nice light coat on the paper. And that is true whether you're doing color pencil, whether you're doing watercolor, or whether you're doing um, pastel or anything else. You always wanna have a nice little roadmap going on with your colors. Start from light and then go to dark. It's much harder to um, put light over dark in color pencil. So if you start with that lightest layer um, and then you can enrich everything and make it darker as you go along. Um, you can use tools like a slice uh, ceramic blade cutter or a uh, X-Acto blade to pick out some details um, and that will bring it down to your first layer of color pencil. So you want those first layers always to be your lightest layers and build up upon that as you go along. It doesn't really matter if you don't have the exact color as your reference photo. Um, just as long as you get all of your values correct, which means that you want to make sure you put in all of your shadows, put in your highlights, and just have everything in between, so all your midtones in between. So you want the full range of value. Value is the lightness or darkness of an object, and you want to have all of that represented in your drawing to make it the most believable as you can. I say all the time that color pencil is a marathon, not a sprint, which means you have to really take the time to layer and layer lightly all of your different colors to get a really rich final effect. So as you start going, you're gonna go very lightly and you're gonna keep layering. And as you keep layering with the polychromos because they're an oil-based pencil, as you go, the next layer is going to blend with the layer before that. So you get a really nice, even, smooth blend, and you're not going to have to worry about wax buildup or wax bloom the way you do with a Prismacolor pencil, any wax-based pencils. These are oil-based, and they really blend beautifully, but the trick there is to just go very slowly, very lightly, and build those layers up. You could have as many as 15 layers of color pencil on top of one another. If you're pressing too hard, you're not gonna be able to put any more detail on top and you'll see that the color is just gonna kind of um, collect in one spot. You won't be able to add any more layers. So work very lightly with nice sharp color pencils. I use the Derwent Super Point Sharpener and it has a really beautiful, very, very sharp point that you can get a lot of detail and um, get it down nice and lightly. The sharper the pencil, the less you will feel the need to put pressure on it, um, therefore scarring the paper and um, putting too much color down all at once. So with really sharp 
color pencils, you'll have some really nice detail, you'll have a good pressure control, and you won't have to worry. My favorite tool in my toolbox is my electric eraser. I can't live without it. It's great for graphite drawings, for drawing hair, for getting some fine, brighter details in. It picks up color pencil almost down to the paper, no matter how many layers you have on it. And it is my very, very favorite tool. You'll see me go and, and uh, pick some detail out with that and then glaze over it with some color pencil from time to time. Um, it's the greatest tool that I have at my disposal. Um, you can make all kinds of mistakes and still pick it up with that electric eraser. Um, you'll see me go in also to my background with a kneaded eraser. The reason for this is I am working flat so that I can videotape for you guys. And um, I want you to be able to see everything that I'm doing as I'm doing it. So normally I would have a piece of tracing paper or a glassine sheet or something under my hand so I'm not smudging all that color around the paper. Um, so I suggest that you do put a piece of paper down um, under your hand as you're drawing and that way you're not smearing it on your background and ruining your drawing. But you'll see me go in with that kneaded eraser and pick that uh, all those color pencil crumbs up. Uh, this way you're not dragging them around and get a nice clean background. So as you go along, I also have a makeup brush, um, just a cheap makeup brush with kind of a big um, bristly head on it so that I can uh, wipe away all of that color pencil dust, eraser dust, anything that might be on the paper. And um, this way, you know, it's not smearing and ruining your drawing. At this stage in the game, we have a lot of layers of color pencil down. This ice cream cone looks yummy enough to grab hold of and eat. And you want to check against your reference photo to just double check all your values, see if you need to tweak anything, you need to brighten something up with a highlight or deepen a shadow up. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Please be on the lookout every Thursday for new videos. Consider subscribing to my channel. Leave me a comment below. I love hearing from each and every one of you, and I do get back to all of you. Thank you so much, and happy art.